All right, so today we're going to be talking about uh, some principles of low vision and also some devices to help people with low vision to be able to read, including handheld CCTVs and magnifiers, and I'll have a discussion about that. I happen to have with me somebody here that is very knowledgeable about low vision and about uh, handheld CCTVs, and that's Mr. Chip Lanning. Uh, Chip here is from Crystal Vision, and uh, so Chip, thank you for joining us today. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Awesome. So tell us a little bit about what you do at Crystal Vision, Chip. Uh, I've been in the low vision industry for about 28 years now. I uh, started back in the early to mid-90s. Um, Crystal Vision is a distributor of low vision and blindness products. So if it's a product in a low vision or blindness world, there's a pretty good chance that we sell it. Uh, most of my responsibilities for Crystal Vision is going to be the low vision products, the low vision equipment that we sell. Um, I live an office out of my home in Weatherford, Texas. So my territory goes about as far south as Waco and then to the borders. Um, so I didn't really appreciate how large the state of Texas was until I had to start driving it. <laughs> so my last yeah. Suburban, I had 600,000 miles on it. And my Suburban now, right now I'm about 400,000 miles on it. Wow. It 20, 20, 2018. Uh, year <laughs> so yeah, most of my stuff is low vision. We do have some crossover products. Um, once we start getting in, into some of the OCR uh, products, uh, the equipment that will actually uh, take a picture and read to you. I, I do some of that. Uh, once we get into our blindness products, uh, we have Jack Hickman and Bobby Lakey up here in North Texas that can, that can cover the bases. So, um, yeah, most of my stuff is low vision. Awesome. All right, so we're going to talk a little bit about just some general principles here uh, when it comes to magnification and low vision. First thing to keep in mind when we talk about magnifiers is that sometimes bigger isn't always better. And what I mean by that is, you know, when, when you go up the magnification scale, you know, sometimes people think, well, if I get a bigger magnifier, you know, it will help me see better, you know, help me read print better or what have you. But the thing to keep in mind is the stronger the magnifier, the smaller the lens. So we have to keep that in mind um, for, for things because oftentimes, you know, it's, well, if I don't see well enough to read, then I can get a larger, more powerful magnifier. And that, you know, can sometimes be counterproductive. Wouldn't you say, Chip? Yeah, I would. Um, again, the stronger the magnifier, the smaller it gets. So if you've ever seen like a 10 power magnifier, it's going to be about the size of a nickel. So if you are able to use that magnification, you're probably gonna be reading one letter at a time. So trying to read one letter at a time or one word at a time, by the time you finish reading the sentence, you have no idea what it was you just read, you know, because you're trying to put the letters and the words together. Um, typically the handheld magnifiers in my experience, once you need something probably larger than 5X, um, we might want to talk about a video or an electronic magnifier because then you can get a much larger field of view and really bump up that magnification if it's needed. Mm -hmm. um, I have a couple of items here I'm just going to briefly show and uh, one being that there is a, a 5x magnifier that's hiding from there it is mm -hmm. and this is just a pocket magnifier and it's a compact and I want to say that I'm I have the magnification side facing out. You do, you do. All right. I'm going to put this in front of the camera and you guys give me some feedback on whether or not you can see this. That's a good spot, right there. Good spot, okay. Mm -hmm. So again, this is about a 5X and this is a, a very appropriate for uh, things like spot reading. And when I say spot reading, what I'm referring to is just reading quickly enough to identify what something is, right? You know, a sales price, a, a canned good, some other item, a business card perhaps someone gave to you, just, just reading along enough to, to get that, that pertinent information. Um, and the, this is a collapsible model. You can fit this in your pocket or in your purse or what have you. So it's very appropriate for maybe shopping or, or things related to that. Um, 
I also have here a, another magnifier. This is actually, I think, not nearly as strong as that one. I could be mistaken. What do you think, Chip? This That's probably about a 3X. 3X, yeah. yeah. This is kind of a, we're getting into Model T territory here. <laughs> <laughs> but this is a lighted magnifier. It's got a grip on it. It's very bright. And boy, I'm going to blend Chip here with this light. That's okay. That's okay. We're good. Um, so a this, a little bit higher. Little bit higher. All right. So this is about a 3X and it's lighted. So it provides some illumination when you're reading. Again, this maybe a little bit more appropriate for spot reading. It does have a larger lens, uh, so you might be able to get some more print on there at one time. Uh, this is a, has a switch here, you just flick, and I think it does take a battery. Right now it's currently plugged into the, uh, to the wall. Now thing to keep in mind also is, when we talk about magnification, sometimes people, they will go down to their local CVS or their Walgreens and they'll buy a magnifier thinking that will help and those aren't necessarily the strongest or best magnifiers wouldn't you say uh yeah it's just if if, if you're in a need of a handheld magnifier probably the best place to maybe go to a low vision doctor because mm -hmm. a lot of times they're going to have those magnifiers that are lighted they'll have round magnifiers rectangular shaped magnifiers dome magnifiers magnifiers with a handle on it so you can actually kind of get your hands on them and really test them out um, the thing with low vision and low vision products, they're either going to work or they're not going to work. So a lot of it is really trying to test them out, experiment, get a demonstration, really try and work with them first uh, before you, you spend the money. Because even on handheld magnifiers, they can get quite expensive you, if you're talking about a lighted handheld magnifier. So um, you can go to, to a Walgreens or a, a over the counter type of magnifier. But even in the store, if you can just take it around the store and maybe try and read the back of a, you know, an ibuprofen bottle, because that print's really small, that would really be a good test. Um, but, and I, I will say that the lighted magnifiers, when I go into people's homes for demonstrations, I see a lot of lighted magnifiers and that light can really make a big difference with a handheld magnifier. Yes, certainly, certainly. Also, um, you know, I find that uh, contrast can help, you know, if you're in a, a room that's brightly lit, yeah. uh, maybe the light overhead can work against you. So what I used to do, because I was more low vision than I've been blind for many years, is I would, I'd have a magnifier and maybe it was lighted it and I would go into a room and I'd turn the light off. Mm -hmm. And then I would take the light of the magnifier and I would put it, you know, above the sheet and I found that there was less glare. Mm -hmm. And that helped me to see it a little better. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of times with that overhead light, it just throws a reflective glare on the magnifier, which can be really distracting. Or even in like a low lit, like in a restaurant, typically restaurants are horrible as far as lighting. So having that light on your magnifier can just be helpful in, in that scenario as well. Yep. Absolutely. So Mr. Chip here is uh, kind enough, kind enough today to uh, show us some uh, magnifiers and um, see handheld uh, video magnifiers. We actually have some here in our ATEC center and Chip has some familiarity with them. Um, so I think we have a, a Ruby there, don't we Chip? Yeah, yeah, with your, with your handheld magnifiers and um, I always kind of look at it as like a tool belt. Your little 5X pocket magnifier might be great for spot viewing. You might have that in your shirt pocket, in your purse, in your bag. You might need a more electronic, more video type of magnifier, say, you know, if you're sitting in your doctor's office and you want to read, you know, an article in a magazine, um, the unit I'm going to show you uh, this afternoon might be a better fit for extensive type of reading. Um, so it's going to be just a, a tool belt of different pieces of equipment from your magnifiers to your portable video magnifiers, maybe to a desktop magnifier. So again, I would encourage you to try everything that's out there. Try and fill up your tool belt with everything that's gonna give you the most uh, success to get through your day, to get through, um, to get back some of that independence that you may have lost with your low vision and a little bit of that quality of lifestyle. Um, typically, uh, when I do in-home demonstrations or sell the video or electronic type of magnifiers is when the handheld magnifiers are just not sufficient enough. They're not strong enough the field of view is not large enough. 
um, the light is not helpful. So then we're going to move into um, an electronic magnifier, which is going to give you hopefully the magnification that you need with a larger screen size. So this particular product here is a Ruby, and what it's going to give you is a 4.3 inch monitor or screen. And when they measure these, they measure them from corner to corner, so it's a diagonal measure. Um, on this Ruby, built in is going to be a video camera, which is on the flip side of the unit in the center. So it's just like a CCTV or a video magnifier, except on a smaller basis. So you can use this Ruby one of two ways. Um, if you have a flat surface, you can just lay it down on top of the reading material. And I'm not real sure. Let me switch this over into a negative mode. Um, right there. We're on a piece of paper, and as you're reading, you're just going to slide the whole unit from side to side and up and down. Okay? You can go anywhere from, I think on the Ruby, it's going to be about 5x up to about maybe 12 to 13 times the size of the print. You can uh, change the magnification, you can change the positive and negative modes. So you can have a white letters on the black background, you can switch it over to yellow on blue. Uh, an orange or yellow on black, black on uh, yellow, and then you have a true color setting. What's nice about the Ruby as well is that you also have a handle, so you can, um, I'm going to turn this off so that glare is not bad, but you can hold it like a conventional magnifier, so if you want to look at a price tag at the store, you can hold it to that price tag, uh, an item on the shelf at the grocery stores, you know, if you're a student and you want to look at the, the menu in the, the cafeteria that's on the wall, you can hold it just like a, a conventional magnifier. This will fit nicely in a purse or a backpack. Um, the carrying case comes with a clip, so you can also clip it on your trousers as well. Um, sell, sell a bunch of these um, for portable magnification. It also has a freeze frame, so you can capture it, temporarily capture an image. Um, so like if you want to magnify, say, the RX number on a prescription bottle, you can make that RX number big, you can freeze it, and now you can set the bottle down and then call in your prescription. A couple before all this COVID stuff, I went into a home and this lady had a flashlight in her mouth, a 5X magnifier in one hand, her prescription bottle in their opposite hand, and her cell phone on the table, and she was trying to read that RX number, remember that, I don't know how many numbers you register in an RX, like 12 numbers. She's trying to magnify that, remember it, and call it in. So with the Ruby, we were able to take a picture of that RX number in large print, save it on that screen, freeze it on that screen, and she was able to call in her prescription number. So little things like That's that, amazing. that freeze frame might, might become of use. Um, recipes, you know, looking at your TV guide, just any number of things having a nice portable magnifier that can get the magnification that you need with a larger, with a larger screen size. And also some of my clients, they find that feature really useful when they're in the grocery store. Yeah. So they can take a freeze frame of a sale price yeah. rather than having to lean in to it down, you know, at, mm -hmm. a, at an angle. That, exactly. Yeah, it makes it less Over awkward, less. more comfortable. Mm -hmm. uh, all of these portable video magnifiers are rechargeable. Uh, on the average, most of them will last about four hours on a full charge. Uh, if the batteries are completely depleted, then it, I mean, it takes about probably five to six hours to get a full charge on them. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, those are pretty reliable. I've, those, I've been around for mm -hmm. a few years. Haven't yeah, they've been around for a while now. I think I recently came across one in one of my cabinets that I may have you look at it later on. Yeah. May just need some new batteries. Yeah, so the batteries over over time and over uses will, will go bad. And they just have to be replaced. So okay. Any questions so far, guys? Questions or comments for Chef Farai? Wendy has her hand up. Go ahead, Wendy. Hi. Um, how much is that last magnum electronic magnifier? Uh, they range in price depending on basically the size and the strength of the magnification. Uh, the one that I just, the first one that we started off with, I believe goes for, I want to say $495, approximately $500. And then they're going to go up in price to larger the screen size. What about this last one? How much was that one? Can you say that again, please? 
How much was the last one you showed? Uh, five, I'm going to say four ninety-five, five hundred dollars Oh, okay. Because I'm, I'm starting to see a little. So I'm, yeah. I, I'll, I'm, I'm going to start back working with my Merlin. Okay. Because I can, like, see stuff on my screen. So, okay. Yeah, no, I'm not, these are all, like, new, like, retail prices. Um, a lot of times we'll get secondhand uh, refurbished equipment in that won't be quite as expensive. So uh, $500, I know, is, is a lot of money. Uh, if that's not doable, I would suggest getting in contact with us. If you're not opposed to a refurbished unit, we could save you some money that way. Okay. Yeah, just just let me know. Okay. For $500, I can buy me a new eye. <laughs> so, <laughs> bad joke. Okay. <laughs> yeah, definitely. If you shop right. there are some options. So, sure. so I don't know if you're familiar okay. With yeah. Thank you, Wendy. All right. Are there any other any other hands raised, Rebecca? No. Rebecca. Oh, um, somebody's asking how to raise their hand. Do you want to go over all those? Yeah, if you want to raise your hand and you're on the computer, it's Alt Y. Uh, if you're dialed in on the phone, it's star nine to raise your hand. Um, all right, so Chip, what I have here is uh, I don't Kevin. Model. Yes. Hold on one second. Dorothy yeah, has her hand up. I'm gonna shut my app right here. <laughs> go ahead, Dorothy. You'll have to unmute on your end as well. Okay. There you go. Um, I just have a question with the Ruby uh, on these handheld magnifiers when I'm working with students. Um, and I think it's going to be a great idea, but then we put it down on print. It's still, you know, depending on their level of magnification needs, you don't get a lot of words in. Do you have any thoughts about that or? Uh, yeah, um, it just, it's going to have to move up to a larger screen. Um, for instance, you're going to be able to get a little bit more um, the larger you go up in screen size, maybe a couple of words from side to side, a couple of lines top and bottom. So maybe like a 10 inch magnifier. Now the problem that you get with larger screens, they become bigger and bulkier, right. you know, and a little bit more difficult to, to carry around, especially with students with any of the portable uh, CCTVs, a lot just depends on the maturity level and if they're able to transport it and, and, and take real good care of it. But yeah, the larger, usually like a 10 inch screen is typically uh, what we sell in an educational environment. Okay. Because you. you're able to get more print on the screen at one time. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, this, what I have here, um, is a sharper image uh, CCTV handheld. I don't know if you've ever seen this model before. I have. Yeah. Yeah. So it's this price range is between like 150 and 200. The last I had checked, mm -hmm. and this one of the batteries have gone out, but I have to keep it tethered, plugged in. But it, I, I find it's pretty versatile. It's got you know it's got like a maybe a what do you say about a three by five inch screen? Mm -hmm. I would say three inches. Three inches. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the, the hand hold it up door, you can chip. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. So it's got some versatility. I think it goes up to like a 10X, maybe 15. Sure. And then on the bottom here, I'm going to, let's see, I'm going to cover up the light. It does have like a little kind of reading stand here. So this can collapse or you can open it up so that you can lay it down flat, flat on your paper that way. Uh, it's it's a small screen, so again, really designed more for for spot viewing yes. or spot reading. Yeah. Also, it has a kind of a cool uh, photograph feature on there where mm -hmm. you can actually print some magnification and then take what? a photo. Okay. And then it'll the photo will display at that size. Okay. Uh, like provided it. that you have a SD card. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. have but um, the, you say two hundred dollars. Yes. Uh, yeah, the price point on this is really good. Yeah, it was like once. Maybe I want to say one seventy. Okay. Seventy five. Um, mm -hmm. We were out surprised that we had gotten a few of those about a year or two yeah. ago, and um, and then providing them on a needs basis. Mm -hmm. And I was 
was impressed with it because I didn't know, you know, sometimes you see a, a lower price point, you expect a, maybe a lower quality. Yeah. Uh, but I found those to be pretty, pretty reliable. They're, they're coming along. <laughs> so, all right. Any questions about that, guys? Otherwise, I'm going to let Chip here show you a few other goodies. Okay, the next one uh, is also a Ruby um, by Freedom Scientific. And I just wanted to show you different screen sizes. Um, there's a couple of manufacturers that make these types of products, so we're not just tied to, to Freedom Scientific, but uh, we also have Optelect, uh, Enhanced Vision, and a number of other companies. But I just wanted to show you this one because it has a larger screen size. Uh, which is going to be a five inch screen from corner to corner. Uh, what works basically the same as a Ruby. You have a magnification range. This one can go up to about 16, 16 times the size of the print. Uh, the buttons are the same controls as a smaller Ruby that I showed you. So you can do positive and negative modes and you can increase and decrease the magnification. And it's got also a freeze frame or a capture image. What I like about this one is that it opens up. So when you're on a flat surface, the ruby is kind of tilted or slanted. So it's a much more comfortable reading position than the smaller ruby where you kind of have to you kind of have to look straight down on top of it when it's on the on the paper. So we a lot of our students like this size. Um, one that it's at a comfortable reading position, and two because it has a larger screen size. What's nice about this is when you want to hold it, you can collapse the stand and underneath you still have that handle where you can, you can hold it, again, like more of a conventional magnifier. Um, they've really distributed the weight nicely on this and the handle is kind of extra large, so it doesn't feel heavy at all. To me, it feels like it's about probably 10 ounces in weight. Awesome. I'm gonna go ahead and try and, and turn this on just to give you a, uh, an idea. It's kind of hard in this environment, but, and that might be too much glare. So right there, you can get a pretty good amount of print on there. Now there's not gonna be any way of getting around ha having to move the unit. That's just part of life. But for our students who want a, something that they can just pull out, use, and then throw back in their backpack, uh, the Ruby 5 might be a good option, or a 5-inch video magnifier might be a good option. What I appreciate about many of these uh, handhelds is how how sleek they are. Mm -hmm. That when I was in college years ago, something like this would be, uh, would say, significantly bulkier. Yeah. You know, less compact. Yeah. And now it's becoming smaller and, and sleeker. Yeah. So this is the Ruby Five uh, collapsed or closed. It's super, super thin, lightweight. The buttons are very tactile. They're very easy to find. Each button has a raised uh, bump dot on it. So if you can't see the buttons, you can find it by touch. Very, very sleek. Very. I, I love the Ruby Five. Very simple to use. Yeah. Back when I was in college, oh, um, I'm gonna date myself about 15 years ago. <laughs> yeah, something like that. I'd have to play, drag it behind me, you know, in a some kind of yeah. uh, wheelbarrow. Yeah. <laughs> I guess it would have been much larger. Yeah, yeah, but it's much, much more compact. Yeah, and I do find a lot with our students, um, even if they can use a CCTV and can be successful with a big CCTV, they just won't use it. It's just they're, a lot of our kids are very self-conscious. They don't want to have yeah. to go to a machine uh, in order to do, to do their schoolwork. If they're able to use a magnifier, then they love it, because a video magnifier, because they can pull it out and use it and throw it back in their backpack yeah. and be done with it. More it's a lot discreet. easier to go from classroom to classroom instead of having the cart or push a big CCTV around. So. Yes, absolutely. Excellent points. Chip. Yeah. The, um so all these handhelds now, do they have HD cameras on them? I think the screens are HD, aren't they? Or uh, yeah, they're pretty much just the wave of this industry. Everything now is in HD or high definition yeah. for the most part. Yeah, which to me with good vision, um, the HD units are such a cleaner, sharper, crisper, just a more vibrant picture. Yeah, I love the HD models. 
Any questions or comments so far? I wonder if some of you out there listening, if you if you use handhelds. Anybody? Something we might talk about here, um, and maybe maybe later on. But Chip, if you could maybe touch on uh, how wearables work and kind of what you know what using a wearable device might look like for someone. We carry a couple of those. They're actually in the cube to the right, but um, I'm not even sure which ones we got offhand. But yeah, I'd be happy to. So if there's no other questions, let me show you one more portable device just to give you an idea. This is called uh, the Looky 10 by, by Rehan, and I don't know if you can see it or not. That glare behind me is pretty distracting. But this is going to be a 10-inch screen. Uh, again, for our professionals, and uh, I know we had an educator on the line, uh, this is going to be, might be a good fit for some of your students because the screen is a lot larger. When it's collapsed, it's super thin, it's very lightweight, and it's still something that you can throw into your, into your backpack and just go from classroom to classroom. Um, I think the magnification range on this one will go from about 4x up to about 18 times the size of the print. It does have a reading stand which will open up. And then you can just, again, just lay it down um, kind of flat on your, your material. And then you're just going to slide the whole unit from side to side and up and down as well. Uh, I think the battery on this Licky 10 is about another uh, four ounce, or I mean a four hour battery, four hours of continuous use before it has to be recharged. This one also has the magnification range, the positive and negative modes. So again, white letters on black, yellow on blue, and different color combinations. And this one also has a, a freeze frame, I believe, as well, or a capture frame. You want to talk about this? Uh, yes. OK. Um, let's, let's is there any questions about the the, the, the Looky? The Looky 10, which is a 10, 10, 10 inch uh, video magnifier. So we've done four inch screens, five inch, and a 10 inch. Okay. We don't have any hands raised. Okay. All right, well, we kind of put something in front of Chip impromptu. And uh, Chip's such a, such a knowledgeable guy here. He's like, oh, whatever, I, can, <laughs> I know it all. <laughs> Um, I think, what is that? Is that the OrCam? Yeah, this is the, the OrCam device. Uh, now, this is uh, not a magnification device at all. It's an OCR device that will take a picture of printed material and read it back to you. Um, it has magnets built into the backside of the unit, so it actually attaches to a pair of glasses. So it's it's kind of weird because I used to sell the old OCR scanners, I mean, even like eight or nine years ago, like the, was it the Reading Edge or the old Xerox that would probably take up most of Kevin's desk here that would sell for like, you know, six, $7,000. Yep, yep, exactly. And it's such a short amount of time, we can do everything in this little stick, which kind of blows my mind. But you basically wear it on the side of your glasses and you're going to be looking at a document and you're gonna take a picture of that document and it just reads it back to you. So you can pause and play it. Uh, you can change the voices on it. Um, it's a really nice, simple OCR device. You can either point and click at it or it has a finger activation where you can stick your finger in the center of the page. The camera will recognize your finger and that's the trigger mechanism to take the picture of the document. It can also do facial recognition. So what you're going to do is you're going to take a, per, a picture of a person's face and then you're going to label that face with your voice. And now every time the camera comes in contact with that person's face, you'll hear that person's name. And we can either set that for automatic 
or we can set it for manual. So if you're looking at someone, you know you're looking at someone, if you push the button and it's set to manual, it'll tell you that person's, um, that person's name. That's remarkable. I had used one of those uh, a few months ago back mm -hmm. in, when we had Swoma, and a gentleman had one there, and I, I, I wore it, and it, it had um, some kind of object identification feature where, mm -hmm. well, if I looked at a door, it would say door. Mm -hmm. It would recognize it, um, whatever line of sight. Yeah. I had it you know, within my environment. I thought that was Yeah, that's really a cool. very, very latest version of the OrCam. Uh, it can, it, it's a little bit tricky when you're trying to do things like that. At a, like if you're trying to see if there's a cup mm -hmm. on the table. So you kind of have to line it up. But I love that new feature as far as product identification. Um, it can also um, do barcodes. So there's thousands and thousands of barcodes already preloaded onto this device. So if you can line up the barcode with the OrCam and take a picture of that barcode, it'll give you the product information on that barcode. Now that can be a little tricky, you know, so if you're blind and it's hard finding a barcode, you know, on a can of chicken noodle soup. Um, but if you can find that barcode, it can do barcode identification. It can do product identification. Um, you can also label, say in your pantry, if you have the same three boxes of cereal every month, you can take pictures of those boxes of cereal, label it, and now if you're in your pantry and you want the box of Frosted Flakes, if you hold that box of Frosted Flakes, it'll tell you Frosted Flakes, Cheerios, or Rice Krispies. Um, it also does a, a money identifier and can do color identifier too. So if you want a blue blouse out of your closet, it, you have that blouse holding in your hand, it'll tell you that what color that blouse is. That's amazing. So the OrCam is a fantastic device. I, I love it. We've been selling a lot of them. It's just amazing how compact it is. Yeah, it's lightweight. super compact. It's a little stick and it just fits on the side of your glasses. So. The camera is that little glass lens on the tip of it. Uh, if you want to operate it by touch, there's a little raised, kind of a little raised bar or track bar on the side. So when you push in on that track bar, it'll take the picture. You can increase the volume or decrease the volume by doing a finger swipe. And that's also how you navigate through the file menus by pushing on that bar and swiping on that bar. Um, doesn't really require a lot of training. I can usually knock train, initial training out in anywhere from one to two hours, and people are usually up and rolling after that. Oh, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Does it have some kind of speech output where it will echo that or state what menu or what option you're toggling between? Yes, it does when you're going through the file menu. Yeah, yeah. Right. It, I love this because it just takes you by the hand and tells you exactly what you need to do and how to do it for the most part. Yeah. So it does have that speech uh, output or echoing what you're doing. Yeah. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. You've come the, quite a ways, haven't we? They have. The only, the only thing is that the battery, it's about a 45 minute to an hour battery uh, built into the OrCam itself. Um, they do, it does come with a separate battery stick like you can get with your cell phones. And those usually will have a six hour charge on it if it's fully charged. Uh, the only thing with that is you are tethered to that battery stick. So you have to have a, the cable going from the OrCam to your battery stick. That's really not a big deal. If you're a student and you're in the library, just plug it up to that battery stick and you're ready to go. It does have Bluetooth capabilities. So um, if you want to uh, hook it up to your Bluetooth headphones, you can do that as well. So, Wonderful. <laughs> Any questions about that? And that's the OrCam uh, My Eye. The OrCam. Mm -hmm. That's an Israeli-based company. You wanted to call it the either OrCam. <laughs> <laughs> either or. <whatever. laughs> I got some other stuff here. This just reminds me of like Jordy from uh, yeah. Star Trek. Any raised hands, Rebecca? No, you're good to go. Okay, the, the next thing that they handed me is the ACE site. And this is kind of the way that this industry is going is going to be uh, head worn devices. Um, I had a lady call it the other day, her magic pair of glasses. Um, so it's something that, and there's a couple of different variations out there. There's one called the Iris Vision. Um, there's a, one called the Patriot Viewpoint. Uh, and they're all, they all work a little bit differently, but they're all products that you can wear. And basically what you're going to do is you're going to put this over your head and it basically gives you 
the ability, if it works with your vision, and I can't really see the camera, but it gives you the ability to view objects from a distance. So if you want to see who's coming in through the front door, if you want to be able to read a directional sign, maybe at the museum or a stop sign, or some people have been able to watch TV or work with their computer on this. And it just gives them the ability to, to do magnification. Um, the, this is the A site. So you're wearing the headpiece, which has your screen and your camera and everything built in here. And then you're gonna be using this little control panel to operate it. So to zoom in and to zoom out, to uh, do your positive and negative modes. If you're trying to read with this, like white letters on a black background or yellow on blue. And it also, it also has this, this cool thing called, they call it, I call it rough edges. It's almost like a, a cartoon where if I'm in the kitchen, your whole kitchen is blacked out except the edges you're, is going to be in white. So you can see the corner of the countertop so you're not walking into it or the corner of your cupboards or their chairs. You don't see it in full color, but you see the white edges of all of these objects. And I didn't really think that was going to be a big deal until I started demonstrating it. And people really like that edging feature on the A site. Um, again, with wearables, it's really best that you get a demonstration first and really try it out and make sure that it's going to that it's going to work for you. Um, but I've been pretty successful with the A site and also some of the like the Patriot viewpoint and the Iris Vision, which kind of uses the virtual kind of reality uh, goggles. So certainly, mm -hmm. yeah, and that's the yeah. Uh, the, say that, Kev. the beautiful or, thing about sure. the. Our ATEC Center that we're developing is we're going to have opportunities those in the, in the community listening to come up here perhaps and just take it for a test drive, right? Sean? That's right. Um, this is the Patriot Viewpoint that I mentioned earlier. This is going to be another wearable device. Um, and I've been really successful with this one, uh, especially with my macular degeneration customers, which I've not had any success previously with wearables because the field of view inside of this is pretty good. So my macular degeneration customers have been able to use their peripheral vision even though they're wearing this. So that's been a really nice, a nice feature. And what they've done with the permission and cooperation of Samsung, they're just using the Samsung VR goggles, the virtual reality goggles that the kids are using now to play their VR games. So inside of the VR goggles is a, are lenses, basically, or optics. And then clipped into the front of the goggles, uh, I believe it's a Samsung Galaxy 8 telephone now, or maybe a Galaxy 10. So they're utilizing the camera on the phone in conjunction with the lenses in the VR goggles, and they've adapted it for low vision. So my folks have been able to put this on and be able to watch television, be able to watch their grandson play baseball or Little League, um, be able, again, see who's coming in through the front door, be able to read, hopefully, at arm's length distance so they can now sit in their recliner and not have to run to their CCTV. Now, again, everybody's different, so what may work for one person may not work for the other person. But if you're looking for a wearable device, I definitely would would contact uh, a representative or come up here to the lighthouse and take a look at all of these because you might get lucky and find something that works for you. Um, this one's pretty simple to operate. All of the controls are on the side of the goggle. I'm sorry about that glare behind me, but there's like a little trackpad that you use your finger. So to zoom in or to zoom out, you're gonna do, be doing a, a single finger swipe, either front to back or back to front, a horizontal swipe. Your brightness control on the screen on the inside is going to be a vertical up and down, down to up swipe. And then also the nice thing about the Patriot Viewpoint, there's also some OCR built into this. So some people have been able to use this for distance viewing, but haven't been able to use it up close to read. If that's the case, we can put this on, look at a document, push that read button, it'll take a picture of that document and read it back to the user. So you have up close viewing, distance viewing, and OCR built into this Patriot viewpoint, this head-worn device. 
What I like about this is that there's no external light that can kind of creep in because the VR goggles wrap around your wrap around your your eyes and your face basically, and it's a padded covering, so it's pretty comfortable. Awesome. I kind of jumped all over the place. Wendy has a hand up. Okay. Go ahead, Wendy. Hi. Well, I was just what I'm experiencing is like uh, it's foggy. If you know what I'm saying, it's not clear. So, is it? Do you have anything that could cut down on? Oh, is glare is what it is. I have a lot of glare. You cut down on glare. Cut down. Um... Are, are, what are you trying to accomplish? Are you trying to read or look at things from a distance? Well, I'm just to be able, well, I, mean, I can get around in my house because I know my home. Yeah. But like just a bit, you know, it's just like what I do see, then it's like foggy. Right. Have you tried tried any type of, um, I don't want to say sunglasses, but like, mm -hmm. like tinted glasses, like an orange tint or a red tint? Yeah, polarized lenses. Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, okay. but that doesn't. Yeah, so maybe it's just something else. Yeah, glare is kind of a, a tough cookie. Um, yeah. But yeah. Because I, I tried them a lot. I have like a orange. Okay. Do you have, have one? Is it is it glaucoma that uh, Wendy that you have or or no? Then in uh, my cornea, yes, Cornea. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, definitely that can cause some problems with refraction, um, the corneal challenges. I mean, at a certain point, though, Chip, there's a, a, probably a, a stepping over the threshold moment where, you know, magnification becomes practical for some people mm -hmm. and it's more maybe a transition towards OCR. Yes. Right? Yeah. But I think it's kind of an individual. Mm -hmm. um, basis there, how that's determined. Do you, do you see that often? Or uh, I, I do see it. I mean, um, not often, but yeah, a lot of times magnification is just not sufficient enough. Right. And instead of just beating our heads against the wall, you know, really trying to struggle mm -hmm. with, you know, someone's at 30 magnification or 40 times the size of their prints, even on a large screen, you might just be, again, reading one letter at a time. So that's where we may want to start encouraging OCR type of products where the equipment can read back to them. Right. Um, just make it a little bit more enjoyable, a little bit more efficient. Yeah, so, I thought that was my experience because I have uh, retinitis pigmentosa. Yeah. And for many years I had a vision that um, was good enough for me to get by right. by way of magnification. And I had a CCTV and I had Zoom text and you know, at a certain point, it just, well, I wouldn't get any information fast right. enough. And so when your history professor hands you a 500 page Excuse book me. on the history <laughs> of the Civil War, and you're expected to read that, I'm like, oh my gosh, yeah. I'm going to have to put this under my CCTV and read yeah. this That's 500. Very That's very stressful. Sure, you bet. Yeah. yeah, so as it just at a certain point, you know, you have, you have that, that discussion, you know, with yourself about, um, well, if I can't, if I can't use the vision I had to get the information that I need, what, whether, what other alternatives might there be available? So just something to keep in mind. Uh, any questions, comments? Dina has her hand up. Go ahead, Dina. Yeah. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh-huh. Okay. So I know that the wearables are pretty expensive. Mm -hmm. um, is there funding available? Will VR or the OIB program pay for wearables? I don't know I don't about know. OIB, uh, but the VR program will. This is, with this being a, one of our evaluation items, it's uh, definitely something VR will pay for. And are they still really expensive, like in the thousands of dollars range? Well, uh, I don't have the prices on... Um, the, the two that Chip showed earlier in front of me right now, I, I will say that uh, I know a long time ago when eSight came out, it was ridiculously expensive. I want to say like $10,000. Yeah. And yeah. then that came, came down. I, I didn't think 
piece of that is even around anymore. But um, these these units are a lot more in the in the normal price range. Um, so I don't have the exact figures, but it's nothing like that. Um, and I'll see if I can get that amount for you. Great, well, thanks. One thing I was going to mention is this is something to to those of you out there listening. I think well, at this at this time I don't have uh, I'm not in a position to to attain one of these type of devices. However, that may you know may happen for some. And so, if you have a an iOS device, um, particularly a, um, especially a, a uh, iPhone, there is a uh, feature called magnifier that's available on the phone that you can enable in your settings uh, and general settings. I believe it's, uh, what is it under John accessibility. So you can set it up so that with your phone, you can make it into a, a handheld magnifier, handheld CCTV. So I'll show you on mine as best I can. So you, you're talking something. about the magnifier like an iPhone? Ah, yes, Sean. Yes. Uh, real quick here, I, I just looked up the uh, Patriot, uh, the Patriot viewpoint. Sorry about that. You're fine. Oh, wait. No. Chip, you back? Yeah, I'm back. back. Sorry about that. Do you do you happen to know the prices on the um, the A site and the Patriot? Uh, twenty nine ninety five, two thousand nine hundred and ninety five dollars. There is also uh, an Irish Vision, a different company. It's basically the same product that's around that three thousand dollar price point. Uh, and then I believe A site, the company that makes uh, that first wearable that I demonstrated. They're coming out with a virtual reality version, and I think that's going to be a twenty-five hundred dollars. Yeah, that's Zoom Max, I believe. Yeah, makes sense. So. Any questions? Questions or comments? I'm just going to show very briefly here on my iPhone that magnifier feature. Uh, this might help some of you get by until maybe a device such as what we're describing is available to you. Um, so you can go into settings, general accessibility, and uh, go to magnifier, and you can enable it by um, making, I think you can enable the accessibility shortcut on your phone. So you can triple click the home button to enable it. But it allows some mag for magnification. Zoom level, 5.4x. Uh, you, you can go to 5x, all the way up to 15x. I'm just sliding my finger up and down to adjust the size. Flashlight. So flashlight feature, you can flashlight. illuminate what you're looking at. You can double tap on that again flashlight. to disable that. Focus lock. Flashlight. Button. Button. Focus lock. Button. Frame. Get a freeze frame on here. So, Dimmed. it's not nice of Apple to <laughs> have thought of that for us. <laughs> um, it's certainly, you know, maybe not a, a, a replacement for some of these devices, but perhaps, you know, as I said, while you're waiting, maybe this can help get you by. It could be helpful, you know, in the grocery store, it could help be, be helpful at home. And if you have any questions about how to enable that or how to use that, Certainly, Sean or I are available to, at least by phone, to walk you through how to set that up to, on, on your phone. So I just want to show that briefly. All right, any questions for myself or Chip especially? Questions or comments? If not, we're going to wrap up here in a couple of minutes. Jeff, Jeff you will be a you will be a YouTube star. All of our recordings go up on YouTube. <laughs> yes, so. yes, we all go up on YouTube. All, uh, all to our own personal embarrassment. <laughs> 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 no, 
No, uh, certainly enjoyed having you. Uh, what's the Thank best you. way for folks to get a hold of you, Chip? If you have questions. Uh, you can just call me directly. Uh, give me the phone number. Mm -hmm. That's 817-996-4960. Uh, or you can call our corporate office down in San Antonio. Um, just look up, let me see if I, I don't remember there. We'll be sending out a recap email at the end of the week, so we'll put your number in there as well. Okay. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yes. And yeah, we'll definitely include that. So uh, if there's no other questions or comments, you can start, uh, we'll let everybody go at this point. And I guess we'll see you back here in the morning for with Miss Alex and on Wednesday. So thanks again, Chip. You're appreciate welcome. it. I appreciate you having me. You bet. Thank, Thank you. you.